This is why we need women and BIPOC in position of power, because we matter. We bring unique perspective in the table and we will make our voices heard. Hello Lizami, my name is Varnica and today I'm going to rant about the dire situation of our healthcare workers and also our healthcare system. I'd like to use this opportunity and say thank you to our healthcare workers who are in the front line and doing their bestest to try and delay the transmission of COVID while we deal with all of those production and distribution of our vaccine and all of those politics behind. Hang on tight, I'll do what I do best and bring awareness to your realities while people get their shit together. So it all started when I was browsing through my Facebook and I read the tragic story of our urgentologist here in Quebec. Um, presumably she took her own life because of all of the stress, um, working as a physician, but the COVID and overall like the 2020 burnout and fatigue. I was really heartbroken because we have failed her as part of this community as a Canadian. We have failed her when we told ourselves that we're going to do our best to support our healthcare workers and try to flatten the curve. Well, the curve is not flat. That's why we're ordered to stay at home and that's why we are under a curfew. Obviously, it's not working. Which leads me to questioning the discrepancy of the communities in terms of who can actually work from home. I know from my community that a lot of people still physically have to leave their house and actually work. And I know that in other racialized communities, it's also their realities. So I'm going to play a little game of question and answer. Who are actually the essential workers right now in Canada? Who comes into your fancy home office and clean your house? Who comes in and take care of your children while you work from home? Who comes in and take care of your elderly parents or relatives while you have an anxiety you maybe they might catch the virus? Who takes care of them? Right? So that's in the care industry. So how about our food supply chain? If you watch my other videos, you know that I talk about this as well, right? Who comes in and drive the truck to bring the goods to the supermarket? right when you go and pay who was in the cash right when you want your steak who cut it y'all know the answer but who pick your bio fruits and vegetable you know the answer too right yeah i heard you say us so of course i am going to rant about this one because we as immigrants here in canada are vital not only to the canada's economy but also to literally the food supply chain did you know that one out of 20 health workers that you're going to be facing here in Canada are of Filipino descent? I know that it doesn't sound a lot like one out of 20, but there's not much Filipinos actually here in Canada compared to US or UK. So yes, we can say proud to be Pinoy for that one. Anyways, what I'm trying to say here is that our healthcare workers are already suffering from PPE, labor, and staffing shortages. And on top of that, they actually face the very real chance of getting the virus. Yet, they brave and went to the hospital and report for duty. So, salute. Also, did you know that the Philippines is one of the top suppliers of healthcare workers, especially nurses? I know our Primo Cuba has the highest number of doctors per capita. And we saw their lacas when they sent their doctors to help in Italy during the first wave of coronavirus coronavirus so imagine that one right two island nations who are supposedly poor are now helping their rich rich up north that says a lot and yes you can rub it on their face because we're literally rubbing their butt anyway Ugh. we are arguably number one supplier of healthcare workers in the world so yes not only that we are rich in natural resources, we are very rich in natural resources. That's why there's a lot of foreign workers in there and taking our natural resources 
but that's going to be another story for another day. Yes, we are actually rich in natural resources, but also we are rich in human resources, not HR, not that department where you go and complain about your co-worker, but an actual human resources. We have enough people who can actually fill in this stuffing shortages all over the world. So you bet we are everywhere. And this is why I, I do what I do and raise awareness because we tend to look down to ourselves but no, you can go and be proud to be Filipino and proud to be Pinoy because we are playing an integral part in the healthcare system and almost every nation, whatever the language they speak to, we also speak it on policy. Healthcare workers are already heavily disadvantaged in terms of protecting themselves. Vaccines are still rolling out and being distributed, and we can safely assume that plenty of our kababayans are in this industry. So, who are actually putting pressure to our government to protect them? Do not forget that the first deaths of this COVID here and everywhere else are Filipino care providers. What is our elected officials? doing to safeguard their safety besides from doing couvre-feu and finding people who walk their dog after 8 p.m. We all know that it's not working, he said it himself. We have a blue-eyed, blonde hair young doctor in Quebec who committed suicide. Is it safe to assume that Premier Legault would do something to support our healthcare workers? My bae has something to say about that one. She says, well, it's nice of me to assume that he has a heart and he actually cares. And actually, I tend to agree because it's almost been a year now and I don't feel anything. A lot of people are still getting infected and it's only my community and other racialized community who are literal front lines. The people in Quebec are sitting pretty at home and such, so there's that, of course. With this lockdown and closure of non-essential businesses, all it does is actually make us more rely and dependent on big companies like Amazon. Did you say it with me? Yeah, Amazon. You know it. Everyone has Amazon. Sure, you can't buy what you consider essential in the nearby store around where you are, but Amazon got you. Amazon got you always. So it will get delivered to you no matter what. You don't even need to leave home. You crave for fried chicken? Well, you also have that app there. Right there. There. Not that one. That one. That one. Yeah. Okay. That one. Yeah. Don't even talk about the people who actually work in this gig economy because that's going to be another whole video that I'm going to talk about. But spoiler alert, they're the same age as me and probably a darker skin tone as me. So. Anyways, um, our premier Lego has been encouraging us to buy local and buy Quebecois and yet we can't even do that because everything is closed. So what's the point? All this does is actually kill mom and pop shops and small time businesses in here who are actually Quebecois because again, they can't open their stores. So it leads us to rely more and more and more to these big companies. Fact is, most racialized communities are more heavily affected by this pandemic, lockdown, and curfews. We all cannot work from home since we mostly work in the service industry and from my previous work, laborious sectors. We also don't live in a house where quarantining is possible. Again, I already mentioned that one. So if one is infected, then you bet that everyone else will get infected. I have seen this happen to three of my friends and Quebec doesn't have that much Filipinos compared to other provinces here in Canada. So go figure which leads me to my actual real rant half of my friends are working as essential workers be it from the healthcare industry and to the other industries i just mentioned the scariest part is that half of my friends who tested positive are the people who are actually very careful they're the type of people who brings their own those mini sanitizer portable one way before covid was a thing they're just generally clean people so it's really heartbreaking and scary to to hear that they tested positive right you know what i'm going to say this canada does not value our migrant workers enough to expose us to this much of a risk they take advantage of our despair because it's better than nothing it's better than in the philippines right they take advantage of our currency difference canadian dollar is worth how much again in the filipino peso yeah 
it's quite a lot so you know what i mean these rich nations canada included want high skilled workers but they pay us shit so low pay low wage jobs they just want us to do their dirty work and they toss us to the front line so we're first to die and they are last to die don't forget that most of the first deaths of covid are from filipino healthcare providers so think about that one remember when lego was teary I begging immigrants to come work for them as a PAB in a sesh as LD? Yeah. Bunch of fucking hypocrites. Um, so I have two things to say in here. So first, CAX platform, so Coalition Avenir Quebec, better known as Capitalist Avenir Quebec, um, is an anti-immigrant platform. That's literally part of their campaign. They want to decrease the number of immigrants coming in here. And also, if you want to be a resident here in Quebec, you got two years to master the French language and your spouse, if you have a spouse, needs to have a level four of French language. You know, as if a regular Quebecois can actually pass that test that they're doing. Literacy test that they're doing. There's a reason why CAC heavily favors European French. Algeria, Morocco, Haiti, French, Guinea, oh, sorry boo boo. As much as you have an impressive dual PhD in engineering, you are not white. So, thank you. Next. It's so bad. Secondly, Quebec has a for profit long term care centers or nursing homes, so go figure. A province who pioneered inequality in social policies that's actually for the people. <clears throat> you know, universal healthcare, it started here in Quebec, right? And everyone else was like, oh, it's such a great idea, we're going to do the same thing. And accessible education? Ever wonder why only Quebec has CEGEP? Well, yeah, now you know why. Because they wanted to take care of the people, right? They don't want Quebec people to be left behind, so they made CEGEP. Okay, one last thing. Did you know that 90% of Canada's caregiver program are from the Philippines? Like the applicants, 90% of them are from the Philippines because this is one of the way that we can use to come in here and have a visa and eventually apply for citizenship. That's the short version of it. But for those in the migrant communities, y'all know the deal, right? You know what I'm talking about. Anyways. Who worked in these long-term care centers, in the nursing home centers, right? And where did the outbreak started again? Yeah. And the second outbreak and like other outbreaks happening? That meat factory I told you about. Yeah. From my other video. Yeah. Okay, so you get it. Okay, this video is running way, way, way too long. So I'm going to be very, very brief. So the key word here is the word care. For centuries, leaders have been predominantly men male right policy and decision makers have always been men it's only the canada and trudeau cabinet since 2015 he argued that the cabinet finally achieved equality having equal numbers of men and women i actually would disagree because i know that alberta has achieved this under ndp leader rachel notley so there's that one. one. For centuries, we have gotten away from this unpaid labor from our mothers, the titas, and grandmothers, and actually grandparents. So since they, like parents and mothers are now going and moving to the workforce, who's going to do their work? Their free, unpaid labor work, right? So you need maids, you need nannies, you need babysitters, you need domestic helpers. All of those work that has been occupied by women for centuries. And these are all considered female work. COVID has unveiled this gross inequality and unfair outlook we have about providing care. How can we create policies to alleviate this severe lack of labor in the care economy when those in position of power have never thought about this? They were actually not expected to provide care because they were actually not socialized to care anyway remember white cis men is the default oh how could have they thought of fixing the problem in the care industry they actually probably have never thought of it anyway and who cares right it's a woman's job and it's not their job 
Canada has a caregiver program, but that's basically just taking advantage of the non-Canadians to literally take care of the others. What a joke. Anyways, this is why we need women and BIPOC in position of power, because we matter. We bring unique perspective in the table, and we will make our voices heard. I'm doing exactly this by doing this video and putting it online so everyone else can access this and I'm bringing in awareness. I'm putting this in the mainstream of our realities because nothing about us without us is for us. Did you guys like that one? Huh? You guys learned something? I want you to all like that like button and show it to me of how you appreciate this one i do appreciate all of your feedback i know some of you guys actually have like private messaged me so that was so cool and so sweet but yes like it now i'm waiting okay okay cool so thank you bye Fucking shit. okay i'll stop